Today, we're gonna turn this big, boring, empty wall into its own little world. I managed to find these huge closet doors being given away for free on Kijiji. Once in a while I take a quick look at the free section just to see if there's any cool stuff being given away that could maybe be used in a future project. It looks like these doors are made from masonite with a white vinyl laminate of some sort, which I think will work great on the CNC. I got rid of the metal framing so I can break the doors into smaller sections. They're a little too big to bring into the basement, so I scored them and broke them up first, and then I cleaned them up after on the table saw. I ended up with six uniformly sized masonite panels that were all cut to fit the CNC machine. Each panel is about three and a half by two feet, and that should allow me to make some pretty big cuts. Most maps are flat. The problem is that the earth is round. This means that most two-dimensional maps are actually distorted representations of the actual land masses. These are called projections. I chose the classic Mercator projection. It's the most widely used world map, and it should be suitable for this kind of art project. The next step was finding a good starting map to use as my main vector graphic. A quick Google search led me to this really nice black and white version. You can see it's almost a bit too detailed, which is nice to look at, but it's not so nice for CNC cutting. I converted the bitmap into a vector and spent some time simplifying the edges and connecting smaller islands so the CNC could cut everything together. Now for this project, I had the crazy idea of adding city lights as seen from space but I couldn't find a vector graphic that represents the light dispersion. I came across this awesome NASA generated image and converted it to black and white and then increased the contrast. This made the lights a bit more pronounced and then I inverted the image and made it into a vector that I could easily overlay onto my version of the Mercator map. I manually laid out a circle dot pattern by estimating where the most concentrated cities are. You can see this took a little while. You'll be able to download all of these files for free from a link in the video description. You can always show your support for the channel by giving us a quick like and subscribe. The smaller green dots represent a smaller diameter drill for the CNC cutting paths. Next up, I chopped up the map and created six sections that correspond to the three and a half by two foot masonite boards that we cut up earlier. Now that the panels are drawn up, it's time to convert each section to individual DXF files and then generate the CNC machine toolpaths. Here's a quick toolpath simulation of one of the map panels. And now we're ready for cutting. From this distant vantage point, the earth might not seem of any particular interest. But for us, it's different. Consider again that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, the aggregate of our joy and suffering, thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines, every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every king and peasant, every young couple in love, Every human being who ever was lived out their lives.
so some of the patterns were a bit thin and some of the more fragile pieces broke off during the cut. I like using wax paper because adhesives don't stick to it. Here I'm reassembling this section of the map and since it's pretty skinny I decided to reinforce it with a little epoxy, some coat hanger, and a little hot glue for good measure. I designed the segmented consonants with mating teeth so they fit together like a puzzle. You can tell I love using this two-part dollar store epoxy resin. A bit of resin and some coat hanger and North America is united again. Now it's time to look for the moss. My first stop was Walmart where they had a pretty good selection. This flora mat moss mat was a great find. It'll make the perfect base layer of moss wherever there's green on the map. This will save me a bit of time laying down the first layer. I used a bit of Gorilla Glue to stick down the mat and just sort of roughly guessed where the green would be. Anything still in white represents a more arid climate on the map. dries, let's get started on the electronics. For the city lights, I found these fiber optic table lamps at the dollar store. I had to buy about 10 of these to do the whole 8 foot wide map. To hold the LED light sources, I'm preparing these little cardboard tubes. Each tube will hold two lights, one warm yellow light and one cool white light. I'm cutting out a metal mesh screen to wrap around the cardboard tubes and securing the screen with tie wraps. The metal screen works really well in grabbing onto the fiber optic filaments when you insert them. If you've ever looked out into a city skyline, you'll notice there's all different colored lights and they almost seem to flicker a bit. I want to attempt to simulate this effect using an Arduino and a bunch of n-channel MOSFET transistors. These transistors are like digital switches and will allow me to write code that pulses the light at different brightnesses really fast so that it gives you the illusion that it's glowing. This board is just a collection of 10 MOSFETs in the same configuration, all connected to terminal blocks to easily hook up the LED light modules. More details about the circuit will be available in the video description. Now we're back to the actual map. The moss mat that we glued earlier has dried, and now I'm removing the excess flashing around the edges. For the detailed moss work, I went around and found more natural craft moss, this time at the dollar store. They even had a bag of white and grey lichens that will work perfectly for the northernmost regions of the map. They almost looked like little icy mountains. To help with color matching the moss to an accurate world map depiction, I took this colored map and reduced the color count to reflect the limited shades of green moss that I had. 
This image can now act as a better guide showing more distinct color separation. And uh, for all the people back on Earth, the crew of Apollo 8 has a message that we would like to send to you. Our planet is a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, let there be a movement in the midst of the water. And let it divide the waters from the water. And God made the prophet. And divided the waters which were under the prophet, the waters which were above the prophet. And it was so. Think of the rivers of blood spilled by all those generals and emperors so that in glory and triumph they could become the momentary masters of a fraction of a dot. Here I laid out different bunches of moss, almost like a paint palette, so I would have easy access to the different colors. It was useful having a laptop nearby to help with the color blending. A heat gun helped get rid of the glue gun cobwebs. I attached little wooden blocks to act as standoffs from the wall, and then screwed in some French cleat picture hangers for wall mounting. I need to fit the electronics in a really shallow depth behind the Europe continent, so I'm using this metal picture frame as a project box. Here I'm placing the Arduino components inside the project box and wiring the different inputs and outputs. The control pins on the Arduino are connected to the corresponding MOSFET pins using a DuPont ribbon jumper cable. Next, I'm connecting the 10 LED light source tube to test some Arduino code. I'm using the Arduino random number function to randomize each light tube's pulse strength and duration. This makes it so that every time you look at the map, it'll be a different experience. Now I'm installing the French cleats on the wall and test fitting the continents. The great thing about French cleats is you only have to level them once. I mounted the project box and a 12 volt, 5 amp power supply behind Europe. For the wall power source, I fished a cable up through the wall, through the baseboard, and connected it to a nearby wall outlet. To make it a bit easier to mount and dismount the modular continents, I added in these male and female pigtail connectors. Because you never know with homemade electronics, I wanted to be safe and added a 2 amp car fuse in series with the 12 volt power supply. If there's ever a short circuit, this fuse will blow and stop the electronics from burning out and it may even prevent a fire. I had to make a pretty big hole to get access to the metal stud in order to fish wires from Europe to Greenland. Just don't tell my landlord. attached the light tubes to the continents and then started the longest stage in this project, 
which is individually stringing thousands of fiber optic filaments through the light holes on the back sides of the continents. This process took weeks of spare time, but it was also kind of relaxing. One trick I learned was grabbing a random bunch of pre-threaded strands and plugging them into each side of the tube for a faster randomized variation. Another trick for if you're working with hot glue is if you turn an air duster can upside down, you can use it to instantly set the hot glue. To keep the filaments from slipping out of the tubes, I poured regular white school glue into all of the light tubes and holes. Once dried, this made it a little bit less fragile and easier to handle. After testing each of the light tubes, I covered up the filaments with duct tape to block out any glowing light that might bleed out. I then covered up the duct tape with brown paper, which when crumpled up it almost looks like jagged rock, almost giving the appearance of those Avatar floating islands. Since I was wiring up the modules anyway, I decided to include a separate 12 volt power line for an optional backlighting feature. All that's left to do now is just give the map a little haircut. Just a reminder that all of the files used in this project will be available for free download in the description, including a poster sized sheet printout for you to make your own map at home out of cardboard and Christmas lights. Help us by showing your support for the channel with a like and subscribe, and let us know what you think of this project in the comments. Thanks for watching.